Hospital workers serious what regrets do you hear from dying patients? I was a hospice nurse. One of my elderly patients had skin cancer, a huge malignant melanoma on the side of his neck that was growing rapidly. He had been a farmer all his life and never married. One night we were talking and I asked him if there was anything he wished he had done differently in his life and he thought about it a minute and said he wished he had worn a hat when he was farming. I wish he did too. I work in a hospital. Whenever someone is at the end of their life, they always just want to be with their loved ones. Any regrets I've heard is always family related. They wanted more time with the people they love. Most people are at peace with things though. People also tend to wish they took their health seriously. He wished he had been a better father to his daughter. He wished they had reconnected. His dementia prevented him from remembering they had reconnected years before and that she visited often. I wish I could have made him aware that he had accomplished his last wish. But he died not really understanding that. In the air, it's not something most people see coming when they arrive. But it's usually the same regret when they are coherent. They all wish their family was there which sucks even more lately with COVID since family can't come in initially. Or they cry out for their so in a panic. It's gotten to the point recently where we tell them, so is right here with you. The look of relief on people's faces just hearing that gets me every time. People just want to not be alone at the end. I had a patient who I was in the room with when her doctor explained she only had a few weeks to live. I knew her well, spent quite a bit of time talking to her up to the news. The days that followed, she seemed to have accepted she was dying. She lived this beautiful, independent, and successful life. Made not money successful, but just plain happy. Anyways, when I was helping her to the tub on day 10 since receiving the news, she just broke down crying and couldn't stop crying about how much she wished she didn't put her dog down. B or C, they could have died together. Come to find out her dog was on his deathbed too. I guess she put her dog down a few days before going into the hospital. She knew her life was over, so she put him down first. She hated herself for it. And for the fact she blew the opportunity for them to spend their last moments together. Really heartbreaking to watch to hear that unfold. She passed early in the morning to days later. I took a couple of mental health days off after she passed and spent some time looking up dogs to adopt and new jobs to apply for. My mom did home health and hospice. My stepdad was very abusive and my mom would take me to work with her to try and protect me. She didn't want to leave him due to religious beliefs. That's a different story. There was an old man. I'd play cards with him. We talk about working on the farm we had. He was a nice guy. He figured out I was being physically abused. His health started declining and he couldn't play cards or get out of bed. The last time I saw him, he said he was sorry he wasn't younger and that he couldn't help me. Almost 25 years ago and I still remember him. I remember of this 40-year-old patient that I had was dying from breast cancer that spread throughout her body. She was diagnosed with breast cancer 10 years earlier and had a mastectomy. The doctor recommended for her to have a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction due to high risk of recurrence of cancer. She said that she wanted to keep her breast a real breast rather than an implant in case she remarries and will be somewhat whole. She regretted not getting the bilateral mastectomy. If she did, she would not gotten cancer in her remaining breast and dying at such a young age. The patient never ended up marrying after all. A week later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I instantly told the doctor that I want a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. I also had an aggressive form of cancer. My doctor kept pushing a lumpectomy, which I probably would have gotten before. I have heard how much she regretted her decision. I feel that she actually saved my life, sharing and opening up with her regret of all time. I worked as an oncology nurse right out of nursing school. I was barely 21 years old. Had a patient about my age who was dying of lung cancer. A few hours before he died, I sat with him. And he was telling me how much he wished that he would have had more time to maybe fall in love, marry, have kids. He was so young. He asked me to call his parents. And he died shortly after they arrived. It was awful. His regrets were more about the life not lived. Many older patients had some interesting life stories and most wanted to tell them before they died. Most were at peace with the life they lived. 
Many regretted working so much and not spending enough time with family. I did training to be a CNA, and we had to work in a nursing home as part of our training. I didn't really get into any deep conversations with the patients there, but I can say this. If you have family in a nursing home, please visit with them. It's a sad and lonely place to be. I was a new nurse, flying solo. We got a call for an incoming trauma. Woman in her 50 is involved in a multi-car accident. We were already at the ambulance and sure of the woman's complete condition. She rolled in, breathing on her own, but very labored with asymmetrical chest expansion. She was profusely bleeding, had multiple deep lacerations, pupils blown, debris covering most of her, etc. Her vitals were unstable, she was circling the drain, we knew she was on the verge of coding. I was standing near her head, ready to assist in supporting her airway, but also providing comfort and doing my best to calm her. The woman looked me directly in the eyes, and in a hoarse, labored voice stated, I was angry. I told her I was disappointed in her. She began to cry, her vitals plummeted. I'm sorry, was the last thing she said before her heart stopped. We coded her, intubated her, performed round after round of ACLS, only to eventually have to call time of death. I still see her face at times, her eyes filled with more emotional pain than physical. It took much longer and was so much harder to write this than I thought it would be. Paramedic, but close enough. Made a run on a woman in her 30 is for shortness of breath. Her and her boyfriend had just moved into an apartment together. They were fighting over something trivial, which room to unpack first or something. He thought she was just being dramatic. We transported, she never made it. Went from awake and talking to unresponsive and asystolic no cardiac activity in a matter of seconds. They were so caught up in a little argument that they never said goodbye. They never told each other they loved them. She didn't have any last words. And honestly, that's even worse. I've worked in long-term care for over a decade. I can't speak for the young, but most often old people regret the things they didn't do. End of life physician here. CPR. No, seriously, hear me out. Imagine using your hands to crush the sternum down two inches repeatedly of your 90-year-old grandmother who weighs 90 pounds. So that maybe you can then put her on a ventilator from which she might never get off alive. We ask this of everyone who comes into the hospital, but too often, it's asked more like, hey, if you're drowning, do you want us to save you? Rather than what it truly is especially for those who most likely won't survive it in the first place, and if they do, will be significantly worse off than there were before they died. The survival statistics for patients with 1-2 significant comorbidities with an in-hospital cardiac arrest is like 5 to leave alive, and then 30-day survival is 5% of that original 5% if I remember correctly. I cannot count the number of times families were adamant on having it done to their loved one, only to then see what it entails firsthand and beg us not to do it again. I worked in long-term care for 12 years. I remember a married couple that shared a room. She had cancer and kidney failure. I was helping her eat lunch one day with her husband sitting there with us. She looked like death. But her husband looked at her then at me and said, Have you ever seen a more beautiful woman? I had to leave and go to the bathroom and cry. I cried for days every time I thought of what he said. I thought I would never know what it was like to be loved like that. I had been divorced for years. I couldn't even tell the story without tearing up. Footnote, I was divorced 23 years when I met Rod. Been together for 11 years. I know that love now. It's never too late. 